Perfecto. Está más o menos. Play game here. Let us stand to our feet. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We greet you this morning in the name that has all power in the precious, perennial, profitable, and powerful name of Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen. What a beautiful day that the Lord has given us to worship him. Amen. It still feels a lot like Eden. Amen. It still feels a lot like Eden. And we're blessed. We're blessed. I know we have some crazy weather in this area, but it could be worse. Amen. Amen. It could be worse. We could be in Kansas. We could have been in Ohio. We could have been in those other places where, or West Virginia where a tornado um, came down. We might get a hurricane scare every now and then, um, but we don't have to deal with what they have to deal with. You don't hear sirens going off in Columbia, South Carolina. Amen. You don't have to duck. Amen. In Columbia, South Carolina. And so we were so happy to wake up this morning and see the sun shining because we already know that he rose. Amen. We already know that he rose. So it's just beautiful to be in this house of worship. Let us bow our heads now and consecrate these services to the glory and the worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, our Father, we come this day to say thank you, God. We thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. As the old deacon would say that last night our bed was not our cooling board and our sheets our winding sheets, God. That we woke up this morning with a measure of strength and some of us in our right minds, amen. But we want to thank you that even if we didn't have all of our right mind, at least we had a line enough to come into the house of the Lord one more time. And even if you're not here physically, if you're watching us here, us remotely, we're glad that you woke up and said, hey, let me turn my TV, let me turn my computer, let me get on my phone and let me listen for a word from on high, God. We, we come to worship you, God. We come to magnify you, God. We come to lift you up and we come to say thank you that you've already given us three months of this year. And God, we pray selfishly for at least one more. We know you got more in your hands, God, but just, 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 give, just give us one more, God. We pray for those who are sick and shut in. We're mindful in this time period that there's still people suffering from COVID. There's still people suffering from this flu brand. And there's still people suffering from other ailments, God, we might not know of, God. We notice that a lot of our members who we grew up in this church with no longer are able to attend regularly because they're dealing with some real medical challenges, God. And I ask the shepherd of this flock, God, stand in the gap, intercede on their behalf, God. Pray for their strength, God. Make sure that we're checking on them and someone is calling them. That we return to old school church where we checked on the sick and the shut in. I know we don't do a list anymore, but I pray that some way, somehow, that you, when you see someone that you have not seen in a while, don't think it's not robbery. Don't think you're not minding your business. You're not trying to get in your business, but you just want them to know somebody loves them. Someone's thinking about them. Someone is caring for them. And if they have a need, let us, the leadership here at Brooklyn Northeast, know that we need to take care of our members, God. Now, God, if we could also be so selfish, we pray right now for Don Staley and our women's basketball team, God. God, we believe in the power of prayer, God. We believe it's already done, God. But what an amazing accomplishment it would be for them to go undefeated, God. And so I, I, I know, as I, my brother Anton Gunn talked about it, you know, the, the, the media wants Iowa to win. The media has a little darling child on their team. And all everybody's talking about Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. But Anton Gunn reminded us the other day that even though we're not getting any press, like Obama did not get any press, even though he did not win Iowa, when he came to South Carolina and he won, it changed the direction of the campaign. So even though everybody's talking about Iowa, we remember that it's South Carolina that's going to get the job done. So we putting it right now in your hands, God. Let South Carolina get the job done. Consecrate these services to thy care and for thy glory. It's in the mighty 
In Max's name of our Messiah, we do pray. And everybody would say amen. As our praise team comes before us, as our praise team comes before us, let us now participate and not spectate. Amen. Let us participate and not spectate. Any of you all right school enough, I don't use the term old school. But any of you all right school enough remember when you could go to Columbia Metropolitan Airport and go watch the planes take off for us, for us is this? For us is this? That was carowinds. For us is this? That was playing golf. Come on, where are my people at? I just want to know I'm with anybody, me, I, 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 yeah, we used to, that used to be a little outside garden. See, we couldn't go everywhere. Touch your neighbor and say, no, you couldn't either. Yeah, you couldn't either. We couldn't go everywhere. That was our excitement. Amen? You can't do that no more. Because when you get there, there's a little sign that says, ticketed passengers only past this point. We used to could spectate. We couldn't participate. But now we need you again. Don't spectate. Participate in the praise and worship experience. This portion of our services does two things. It gets the house right and it gets you right. Before you can plant seeds, the soil has to be lifted and tilled and prepared for seed to be sown into it. So prepare your hearts now for worship as our praise team now comes before us. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Put your hands together with us as we sing, Lord, you're worthy.
Anybody know he deserves your praise? Hey, don't fool me now. Anybody know he deserves your praise? Amen. Yes, we clap and we celebrate everything. Dave, give me a little bit in the monitors. But nobody deserves your praise like Jesus deserves your praise. Amen. Because truth be told, no one has done anything for you like Jesus has done for you. And the beautiful thing about it is it keeps on doing great things. Amen. Now, that's what I really want to witness, of the witness of people who know that he keeps on. He just didn't stop on Calvary. Amen. He just didn't stop on that Sunday morning. He keeps on doing great things. And one more time, a great God deserves your great praise. And if you've given him your best praise after you've given him Whatever praise you can give him, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. You know, my brothers and my sisters, all too often, you know, you, you hear these praise team leaders and others, you know, tell you to give God your, your best praise and to, um, keep on telling you, give him your best praise, keep on telling you to give you your best praise, and you can do better than that, you can do better than that. And, and I've come to understand, number one, your, your praise is contingent upon what you've been through. Okay, I'm going to try that one more again. Your, your praise is contingent upon what you've been through. If you've been through a lot, if you've had to deal with a lot of hell in your life, and you know it was nobody but God, Sometimes you just want to tell your neighbor, move out the way, move, 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 move out the way, move out the way, move. You can tell them right now, move out the way. I I'm just talking. I'm not trying to warm you up or beat you up or keep you up. I'm just telling you some facts. Your, your praise is contingent upon what you've been through. All right. If you've been through cancer, if you've been through a divorce, if you've almost lost everything and you know God restored you, you might not be praising the same way that someone who ain't been through what you've been through. Amen. And so I appreciate people. I appreciate people that know that it was only but the Lord that was on my side who has done such a wonderful thing in my life. Amen. And then I never want to, I never want to, never want to even put a time limit. Let's give God a 15-second praise break. 
Let's give God a 30-second praise break. It didn't take 15 seconds for God to deliver me. It didn't take 30 seconds for God to deliver me. It didn't take a minute for God to get me out of that divorce and to get me out of my issues and save me. So if you know that God has given you something just in your own way, just in your own mind, just, 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 if you know it was God, because you couldn't do it by yourself. I, I know I couldn't do it by myself. I, I, I just know I couldn't do it by myself. And so we offer him praise on this Sunday morning. Amen. How many of you were here? How many of you were here with last Sunday? How many? And I'm not trying to embarrass nobody. But last Sunday, to me, felt like what Easter Sunday was supposed to feel like. Amen. <laughs> now, my brothers and my sisters, every Sunday in a Protestant church, especially in an African American Baptist church, every Sunday, should be Resurrection Sunday. And what I mean by that, we should celebrate his resurrection every Sunday. We should be happy that he got up for us every Sunday morning. We just shouldn't have to put uh, it on the calendar to remind us that, that he rose. But let's be honest, there's just something special about Easter and Resurrection Sunday. It's just something special to have the church full with people who ain't been to church all year long. But they do respect and honor Easter. Interesting, isn't it? It's funny that they will go out and buy a whole new suit and outfit just for Easter. But I do believe in my heart of hearts that they're not doing that to impress you. All right? They, they want to look their best. They want to act their best because God gave us his best. Amen. And, uh, I, I just want to thank God for the spirit um, that was in this house on, on last Sunday and, and bringing us back. So much has changed in the church, you all know, especially those of us who were raised right school. There's some churches you go to now, we don't even know you in church. Amen. And church just not listen, look like what a lot of us grew up watching and be, grew up experiencing. I, I'm not being... Um, uh, judgmental at all, uh, but I just like old school church. I just like old school. I just like old school church. And I thank each one of you, each one of you, uh, for being here on last Sunday and for the wonderful experience um, that we had. Amen. Um, the game starts at three. The game starts at three, so that gives me enough time to do about three sermons. So I'm just going. <laughs> I'm just going to go on. All right, all right. Salisha says you got to be the public by two, so I shorten one of them. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Mark 16. Again, Mark 16. Um, as we turn, uh, pray for um, uh, Reverend Smith, who's still dealing with some um, respiratory issues. I normally don't talk about people's business, but um, it's good sometimes to, to let people know, uh, especially in our leadership positions. Uh, you know, when we ain't here, people be asking. Uh, and thank you, Martin, for being the witness. Uh, they be asking where, where they at, why they ain't here. You know, um, Erica um, is at the Final Four because she got a good pastor who bought a ticket, so that's why Erica ain't here. But we done learned today we don't need a know-how. Uh, oh, I'm about to get a text right now in the middle of the service. I, but y'all did great. Amen. Y'all are wonderful. That's, that's a wonderful thing. One of the greatest things in the world as a pastor, as a boss, as a supervisor, is knowing that when you're away, that everything is going to be all right and run smoothly. So... I hope it's okay to say that's good training, but also y'all, y'all do it for Jesus, Amen. Some choirs just sing for the for the choir director, for the minister of music, but y'all sing for Jesus, and I'm glad that you all were actually, were actually, actually, were absolutely wonderful today, Amen, Amen. You know, Cynthia, Cynthia is now working on her dissertation and speaking at conferences, so you won't see her all the time. So. You know, that's going to be, I ain't seen the first, what's going on? 
you know, and then pastors make the mistake of, please pray for me and my family. <laughs> Big mistake, Keith. Big mistake. It's, it's, it's actually natural. It's actually pure. But people be wanting to know what, what we praying for. <laughs> and then you know us, we'll make it up. Amen. If we don't. Y'all wrong people, wrong people. Mark 16. Mark 16, 14. Y'all got it? All right. I think this is the King James Version. Afterwards, he appeared unto the eleven. And as they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. This is a stay right there, Tim. This is a good word for after Resurrection Sunday. Afterward. Somebody say afterward. afterward. He appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Martin, the Bible says afterward. He appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. My brothers and my sisters, your, your neighbor, someone sat next to you, um, failed out of Sunday school. Remind them how many disciples there were originally. Remind somebody because y'all, the one that didn't say nothing is the one who didn't know. And I tell you, somebody else, tell them how many did it begin with? How many did it begin with? How many did it begin with? This is call and response. How many did it begin with? How many did he speak to? I want to talk this Sunday morning about subtraction in the sanctuary. Subtraction in the sanctuary. Tim, put up those stats for me, if you will. My brothers and my sisters, in 1950, I know it's a little small, 90% of Americans identified as Christians. Again, in 1990, oh, it ain't small. <laughs> in 1950, 90% of Americans identified as Christians. In 2024, only 68% of Americans identify as Christians. In 1965, 70% of Americans said religion was important. Now, this is the stat that bothers me touches me the most. In 1965, 70% of Americans said religion was important. Church attendance, relationship with Jesus Christ, having some form of spirituality, 70% thought it was important. Now, in 2024, only 45% of Americans said religion was important in their lives. This is a Gallup poll, serious research, that says half of our country no longer believes that religion is important. In 1965, 73% of Americans belonged to a church, all right? But in 2020, before COVID claim came, before COVID, before COVID, only 30% claim they attended church regularly. And then in 2024, after COVID, now only 26% of Americans are honest enough to say they do not attend church regularly. 
and 8%, is that right? 5%, 5% say they watch service remotely. Since 1950s, since the 1960s, we have seen not only in a reduction of church attendance and church allegiance, but again, what bothers me the most is that there are so many people today that do not think a relationship with God, Jesus Christ, or even Allah are important in their lives. I don't have enough time this Sunday morning to go over the reasons why that is happening. There are so many reasons why. Um, some spiritual, some secular. Why so many people do not believe in what we call organized religion, do not believe in having a relationship or cultivating a relationship with Jesus Christ, and especially so many do not believe that attending church regularly is important in their lives. I've got a few, I've got a few right school people in here right now that going to church on Sunday morning was not an option in your home. It was not an option in your home. There's some of you who are so old school that you all started on Saturday. Come on, tell your age. There's some of you who had a grandma that cooked Sunday dinner on Saturday. Come on, come on. I need to be, I need to be with my right folk. All right? Because if I ain't at the right place, I'm leaving and going to talk to somebody else. All right? You didn't iron your clothes on Saturday. All right? You had to have them ready, laid out before Sunday morning. Where do you think the concept Saturday bath Some of y'all still on the take it. <laughs> I hope that ain't your neighbor. Where do you think the concept Saturday bath came from? Because you sometimes you didn't have running water. You know, they, you weren't living in an area where our, our inhabitants and our ancestors had running water in the house. Uh, it took a lot to pump that pump, fill them pails then put it on the stove, get it warm enough to put it in a tub. Didn't have no bath with granite. And some of us now got six. All right, you can be bougie one moment. We can be bougie wrong. Some of us got six. I said us, that included me. We got, I don't know what I need all these jets for. Where, where? Uh, pretty good right there. They didn't have that back in the day. They had a pump outside. You had to pump them pails, put it on the stove, heat it up, and keep putting it into the tub until you got enough. And then you were not the only one Your brother got in after you. Your sister got in after you. Your cousins got in after you. It's like that good Marcus hot dog water. You know when you made them red hot dogs and the, and the pot turned pink and nobody threw the water away just in case somebody else would. That was good hot dog water. That water had been marinated, ain't it? We got ready on Saturday to worship God in spirit and truth on Sunday. And we gave God our very best. Well, I didn't need Gallup to let me know that there has been not only a reduction in church attendance, but a reduction in people's relationship and their 
goals and their allegiance to Jesus Christ. And especially in this day and time, people's problem with organized religion. And I wish you all would give me two sermons to um, talk about problems with organized religion. Because I would be honest with you to let you know that part of the problem that people have with going to church is us, the people who do go to church. Do you know that somebody is not a member of this church because you are? Somebody is not a member of this church because I'm the pastor. There's some churches, and I'm going to deal with this in a, in a couple of weeks. You know, um, the, Lewis Watson um, talked about, I'm just going to give you a little teaser, like, you know, like do at movie theaters, tell you the movies that, that are coming up. You know when he talked about that leper, that one leper who was a Samaritan um, that could not, he turned around to tell Jesus, thank you, and the other ten, other nine, whether went to the temple? I'm going to give you a little, just give, we'll talk about it later, but I'm going to give it to you now. That one was a Samaritan. They weren't allowed in the temple because of the rules of the temple. You had to be a pure Jew to go into the temple. They had no relationship, Martin, with the priest to go show themselves to the priest. Yes, they were appreciative of Jesus Christ. But the rules and the regulations of the day told that Samaritan they were not allowed in the temple. Do we still have rules and regulations? Do we make church uncomfortable for some people that they won't even solicit attempt to come in to the church? I'm still asking, I'm still asking 2024, do we have to dress up for church? No. There is no requirement. We're not turning nobody away. All right? You do what makes you feel comfortable. All right? If you feel like you have to have on a hat and white pantyhose and closed toe shoes, then wear that. All right? You're going to be hot. But wear that, all right? All y'all who sit on the front row or close to the front row and wear, and nobody got, yeah, you got on one. Got on your little, I'm not trying to embarrass you. It's, at all, I'm not, you know, that's respect that your grandma taught you. That if you, if you sit close to the pastor, you know, you can't expose your knees, all right? Oh, y'all, okay, I'm in, the, I'm in the right place now. But let me tell you, your knees ain't going to turn me on, okay? I'm just going to let you know. All right. I'm just telling you. I'm just, yours might. Yours might. Don't wear no scarf, I'm glad you ain't got no scarf. I got other. Never mind. <laughs> Woo! But I didn't need Gallup, Dr. Artis, to, to tell me about the reduction in church attendance and why people no longer go to church. Last Sunday, we had to put out chairs. Last Sunday, we had to turn people away because we were jam-packed. Right now, ain't nobody asked you to scoot over. <laughs> right now, nobody is looking for a seat. Why is it that people just show up when they want to show up? Why do people just show up on special days? Because I don't just need Jesus on Easter. I just don't need Jesus on Mother's Day. 
I just don't need Thanksgiving to give him thanks. I don't need just Christmas to give him a Christmas gift. God has been good to me on Monday. He's been good to me on Tuesday. He's been good to me on Wednesday. He's going to get good to me on Thursday. I'm just going to keep going until I catch your day. He's been good to me on Friday. And I know for somebody, if you're in here this morning, he was good to you last night because he woke you up this morning. I don't need a special day on the calendar to come into his house and worship him in spirit and in truth. And I do believe, I do believe and don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, but I do have to tell you the truth. There is a big difference between watching church and being in church. I'm grateful for you. I thank God for you. As I tell you all the time, if you in New York, I'm not talking about you. Send your tithes. If you're in Oklahoma, I'm not talking about you. Send your tithes. If you are our member in, in, in Kansas or, or Florida, you've got some people all the way in a Africa, in the continent. we got people watching be in Belgium and Germany every Sunday. Tim can tell me about IP addresses where people are watching all over the world. I'm not talking about y'all, but the text is talking about y'all who are 25 miles away. The text, not the pastor, the text is talking about y'all who are across the street. Because there's a big difference for those of us who are sports fans. There's a big difference between watching the Eagles on TV than being in the house. All right? There's a big difference between being watching a, a game caught game on your couch than being among 81 thousand people in Williams Bryce Stadium. There's, there's a big difference. And for those of you who are not into sport, there's a big difference between getting your hair done and you're in your living room and in your kitchen than going to the beauty salon. Ain't nobody gossiping in the um <laughs> in your kitchen. For us who are African Americans, when I used to go to the barbershop, 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 back in the day, back in antebellum slavery, when I used to go to the barbershop, when I used to have hair, there was just something fun, just something exciting. Come on, where my brother's at, about being in the barbershop and the barbershop talk. And all that talk changed when the pastor walked in. And I would tell him, no, keep cussing the way you were cussing before, all right? There's just something different about being in the house. Well, this just didn't start happening. This phenomenon of subtraction in the sanctuary and people leaving the church just didn't start, Joyce. It even started before Jesus was crucified. Even before he was crucified, a member left the church. And this member didn't leave because of church hurt. This member left because they hurt the church. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there was a disciple by the name of Judas. He was a member of the original 12. He was chosen by Jesus specifically because Jesus even says, haven't I chosen 12 of you and one of you is a devil? Jesus intentionally put a devil on his team. And let me pause for station identification and let you know that in and on all of our teams, Deacon Daniels, there's a devil. In your sorority, there's several devils. In your fraternity, there are devils. On your job, there are Woo! Come on. Some of y'all got a lot. Boy, that touched some nerves right there. Somebody touched a nerve right there. There are a lot of devils. So don't ever be shocked when you find devils in your midst. All them devils are for a purpose. One of those purposes is to keep you prayed up. All right? Because if you ain't prayed up, 
And if you ain't a Christian, you would have been giving them a piece of your mind. You would have been upside down their head, and you would have been lost their job. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I wanna, I, I, I'm excited about this text. If you were not a Christian, they would have seen your BC days, that's before Christ days, where you would give a person a piece of your mind. Come on, where everybody who ain't, they saved, but you ain't all the way saved yet. You still got some growth to do. Come on, be witness to you. Don't me call you out. You still got some, you still cuss up. Out. You fill in the blank. But let me tell you why else God chose a devil and why there's also a devil on your team. Devils help us see the good people. Come on, one minute. The devils help us see the good people. I shocked. I mean, I shocked. She almost fainted. I told one of my deaconesses, I was really, really, really heavy last Sunday. And I just had a spirit of gratitude. And there's been a deaconess uh, with us since day one, since 2006. And she's still here, and she's one of the hardest working women in show business. And um, we, we've had people come and go, all right? And she's been with us for 17 years. All right, and my spirit of gratitude with tears in my eyes went up to her and said, thank you for sticking with me. All right. She really wanted to know what she had done specifically to deserve that. Caught her off guard. She was ready to faint. All right. But she didn't have to do nothing specifically at what she has done as a body of work to show her loyalty to Jesus Christ and this church. All right? And so I just, out of my spirit of gratitude, just want to let her know, thank you not only sticking with me personally as pastor, but sticking with the kingdom. And because when you see people like that, it exposes the ones who ain't all the way real. And I'm not talking about deaconesses right now. I'm talk talking about deacons, not talking about leaders. I'm talking about in your circle. Because when you look at your circle, when you look at your circle, when you look at your groups and you look at your organiza organizations, the people always asking questions, the people that want to extend the meeting for a whole hour to talk over one little subject, we just going to have green shirts. It don't matter why we got to change it. We done already voted on the green shirts. Why you won't keep bringing up purple and red? That ain't even our sorority color. Can we just go on with the meeting? The people that call you before the meeting to see how you're going to vote. Oh, y'all don't want to be real today. The people that are always causing problems then make the good people gravitate one to another. Don't you realize by now Judas did not change the minds and the thoughts and the allegiance of anyone else? In the group. Think about it, Digging Moore. He went to Thomas. Said, Thomas, I know you doubt him. I know you got problems with him too, Thomas. Why don't you join my team? Thomas ain't joined. Peter, he always asking for money and where we can do this and where to do that. Tired of him begging. Peter didn't leave the team. John, he don't even respect you. You soft. You a mama's boy. Come join my team. Nobody left the team but one. And so let me help somebody who's in a situation where I'm referring to on a bad job, in a bad organization, around a negative person, that person in due time will commit suicide. And sometimes you've got to let crazy people be crazy so everybody else can see them be crazy. 
Let me, let me go over that one more time. Even if you're the first one that notices they crazy, don't say nothing yet. Come on, come on, where my real saints at? When you notice that somebody a little off, right, you ain't got to be the first one to expose them. Let them keep on doing what they're doing. They'll expose themselves. Jesus says, you all didn't believe in me. He only speaks to the 11 because there's been subtraction in the sanctuary. One has already left. In this context, one has left. In our context, millions have left. And the same reasons that Jesus gives 2,000 years ago, the reason why he saw subtraction in his personal sanctuary are the same reasons why we're seeing subtraction in our sanctuaries today. He says the first reason why we've got subtraction in the sanctuary is because of unbelief. It, it, it is right here in the text. Afterward, he appeared until the 11 as they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief. In other words, Jesus read them. I don't know if we still use that term anymore in our culture, but he read them. He, he told them everything about themselves. He said, one of the reasons why you all did not run to the tomb, one of the reasons why you did not come see about me is because you did not believe that I said what I said and I did what I did. You, you might have not believed it because a woman. I thought I was going to get, it was just right here, right there. I don't even take notes, but it, in my imagination, I just knew more women were going to clap. Maybe it was because a woman told you something. And in this culture, you all don't believe the women. And so you got an unbelief. But I told a woman specifically, Marcus, because I knew a woman wasn't going to keep it to herself. I knew a woman was going to keep it. If I had told Peter, he wouldn't have told nobody. If I had told John, he wasn't going to tell nobody. But if you really want to get a word out, you got to tell a woman. I need some women right now. Who, you okay? It's okay right now. You tell your story. It's okay right now. You get on the phone and make sure everybody in the family. When he got up that Sunday morning, Mary came to anoint him. Two women came that early Sunday morning to anoint him, to give him a proper Jewish burial. And you know the story, I ain't got enough time and don't need, I hope, to tell you the whole story. The stone is rolled away. And, and one of the things that interests us and should interest you, how two women going to roll that big boulder away. I know we, we got some female bodybuilders right now, but Mary and they weren't no bodybuilders. They, the first thing they wanted to know, how we going to move this stone? It's in the text. How are we going to move this stone? We've seen this big rock. We don't have the power to move this stone. Can I serve notice on the devil and service on somebody's doubt right now that God will move your mountains before you? I just need a few little witnesses that you have come against some mountains. You have come against some blockages. You have come against some detours in your life where you did not know how it was going to help or help. It was going to work out. You didn't know how you were going to pay that debt off. You didn't know how you were going to pay your student loan. You didn't know how you were going to rear your children by yourself. But anybody can say that God has made a way out of no way. I just need a few believers. I just need somebody else as a witness. You ain't never witnessed before. This is your one opportunity to be a witness for Jesus Christ right now. Have you ever come to a situation where you did not know how it was going to happen but God And you don't know how much you miss when you don't come in the house. You just don't know how much you miss when you come into the house. You just don't know what you're doing to your soul when you don't actually enter into the house every now and 
then. But pastor, thank you for watching. Thank you for attending virtually. But I know for a shadow of my doubt that most people who worship in Cilicia ain't worshiping. All right? You're not worshiping. I wonder how many of them actually stand up and get in front of the TV or get in front of their laptop and have a worship experience and feel the presence of God. And we know, pastors know, we talk about this at conferences, you know, if they teach, they preach, they, I'm sorry, they, they, they treat Sunday morning just like you treat your cable. You got 2,000 channels with nothing to watch. But now most of y'all done cut the cord, so you ain't got that many. But back in the day when you had Spectrum, you got 2,000 channels. And what people do, they just like when they surf it on the web, they surf churches. If they don't like what the preacher talking about that day, they go to the next channel. They'll find somebody else. But there's something cathartic. There's something about coming into the house of the Lord. There's something about corporate worship. There's something of being around other saints. There's something about seeing somebody else get happy. There's something about seeing somebody else smile. There's something about seeing somebody else wig fall off. You can't get that at home. And he says, you all did not believe in what I said, that it was possible for me to get up from the grave in three days. And I'm here to let somebody know that what God has done for others, he can do the same thing for you. That if you believe that he is a healer, that if you believe that he is a deliverer, that he believe he will restore your marriage, that if you believe he will take your child off a of drug, if you come into the house, uh, you'll see other witnesses who have been through the same thing you have, then they have made it uh, by the grace of God. I don't want to bother you anymore, but somebody on your row needs a believer right now. Now, somebody on your road beans a witness right now. If you don't mind having being a little back the costa for me and let somebody know he's done it for me. Yeah. Sam, tell somebody he's done it for me. Come on, come on, come on. He's done it for me. And I don't know what you're going through, but he'll do the same thing for you. I need somebody in that back corner just to be a fire starter for me that, that will tell somebody. No, no, really tell somebody. He's done it for me. If you want to get specific, go ahead and be specific. We ain't got nothing to do till 3 o'clock. Let them know he cured me from cancer. Let them know that he put my marriage back together. Let them know that my child got off a drug. Can we take a moment and witness to God that anybody here a believer? Say yeah! He said one of the reasons why all y'all ain't here is because you don't believe. Sit on down. Then he says one of the reasons why y'all ain't here is because the hardness of your heart. He said your hearts done gotten hard. He said the same joy you used to have when I was with you in the physical, you don't have no more. Some of you got anxiety right now because you're scared you're going to die like they kill me. Okay, Gail, help me, Gail. Help me, Gail. They're hiding in the same room where he told them he was going to die. All right, somebody missed that. They're hiding in the same room where they told them he was going to die. All right, fifth grade education. He told them that he was going to die in an upper room. And where did they go hide? In the same room. That's why us in our community don't understand scary movies like Jason. <laughs> That's why us in our community don't understand Michael Moore. Because in other communities, when they hear creeping sounds <laughs> and noise in the basement, Karen liked to go investigate. But Laquita ruins. <laughs> hey. 
And so they're scared because they don't have a savior. And sometimes when you're scared, fear is also coupled with anger. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. When you heard you got cancer, or you heard your loved one got cancer, you were scared and you were mad. When you were told that your job was downsizing, you were scared and you were mad. All right? When you get that bill from City of Columbia Water for $3,000, and you know it's wrong, you know it's a mistake, you know it's a mistake, but you're still scared, <laughs> but you're also mad. And so those two sometimes, y'all, are coupled together, and it's just human. I don't care how super a Christian you are, it's just human to couple those things together. And so they're a little mad at Jesus for leaving them. Who is going to protect them right now? So why, Jesus, you think because you left us, we're supposed to come find you? James and John ran. John tells us that he outran Peter. And I'm sure I know why John says he outran Peter, because John wrote the book. <laughs> and John want to look better. That's human nature, too. John want to look better than Peter. John is the one that went into the tomb first to see that he was not in the tomb. They knew that he had done what he had said. But the other nine... Judas is already dead. Peter and John go. The other nine stayed closed up in a locked room because their hearts weren't right. Now, COVID exposed a whole lot of things. And you know what COVID also exposed? It also exposed whether you are a committed Christian or a convenient Christian. Because I am convinced, Joyce, that the people who don't come to church now really didn't want to go to church before COVID. Because if God was important to you before COVID, I think he should be more important to you after COVID. See, I am a two-time COVID survivor, so I know God saved me. I have asthma. I have bronchitis. I was a candidate for death. And I got it early on when you had to be quarantined from your family for 14 days. I got pictures of me eating Thanksgiving outside in the cold on the balcony while they on the inside warm and comfortable because I had COVID. Anybody else in here had COVID or had COVID? You need to be the first person shouting right now because you could have been in a cemetery right now. You could have lost your mind. You could have lost all your faculty because you know that God provided for you and saved you. Anybody got blood pressure and diabetes and had COVID? Anybody got respiratory issues and you had COVID and you're breathing right now? The Bible says that if you got breath in your body you should make some noise right now. There should be a sound in the sanctuary right now. We should be blowing this roof off right now. <laughs> that if you survive, call, yeah, Michael Kills. You have been there, Michael Kills. If you got breath in your body right now, you should desire to come in the house of the Lord. You should want to run into the house of the Lord because every day ain't promise. I wish I had a witness right now to say thank you for saving me. <laughs> It was nobody but you, Lord. It was nobody. 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 You got to excuse me. I got to take my own 30-second praise break. And I ain't worried about you. I ain't even studying you right now. But I got to thank them. I got to thank them right now that I should have been dead and gone with all of my medical issues, with, with my bronchitis and with my asthma and with high blood pressure running into my body, but it ain't running in me uh, because I'm running. Uh, but I should have been a candidate for death, uh, but God decided uh, to spare my life. Uh, I want to thank you, God, uh, for sending two nurses, uh, one by the name of Jesus uh, and one by the name of Cynthia, uh, who took good care of me uh, through both 
both occasions of having COVID. And I just want to thank you, God, on behalf of Chris Levy. I don't need no rocks crying out for me. As a matter of fact, I don't even know what the rock's going to praise you for. But I'm going to praise you for waking me up this morning. I'm going to praise you for putting me in my right mind. I'm going to praise you for giving me breath. I'm going to praise you that Cynthia's still with me. I'm going to praise you that I still got two beautiful children. I'm going to thank you that you all call me pastor. I am a grateful human being because God say it. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. But the last thing he said, and I'm out your way. The last thing he said, you did not believe Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. More is right here. He said, you had unbelief. You had heart as a heart. He says, and you did not believe them which had seen him after he was risen. You had unbelief. You didn't believe and you did not even believe them who saw me. Thank you for y'all three witnesses. You didn't believe in what I said I was going to do. Your heart was hard, and so you didn't even come check on me. But you didn't even believe them who saw me. All right, y'all done missed your shout. You didn't believe that I was going to do what I said I was going to do. Your heart was hard until y'all didn't come to the tomb to check on me. And you did not believe those who saw me. You done missed your shout. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Attorney Artist knows, and any other of you who are lawyers in here, know that when you are in, especially a criminal trial, both the state and the defense have to put up not only witnesses, but they have to also provide evidence either of the crime or evidence to suggest that the criminal did not do it. Uh, they have to take the evidence and they have to present it before the court and have it labeled as evidence. The court reporter, the clerk of court will then take that evidence and they will put a stick on it and they will record it as exhibit one, exhibit two, exhibit three, defense exhibit one, ex defense exhibit two, ex defense exhibit three, they are tangible pieces of evidence that show that the defendant was either at the place where the person was shot. They can now even use cell phone signals to say that the defendant was in the area where the crime was. All right. They have pathological or pathology. <laughs> They have path. Come on, where my law and order people? You should know what I'm talking about. And, you know, they, they got forensic, what they call forensic evidence. All right. And everything has to be put into evidence in the court. And one of the things that the jury can request after they go into deliberation is that they can ask to see all of the physical evidence. They can ask to see where the blood splattered. They can ask to see what was in the blood and in the DNA. They can ask to see and feel even the gun. They can ask to see all the reports from the pathologist. They can see all the physical evidence and that will tell the jury whether or not the person was there or not. And Jesus saying, I have put some witnesses up on the stand. 
I have put some witnesses up on the stand. I have put some witnesses up on the stand, and you still don't believe. I have put Mary Magdalene up on the stand. I have put her cousin Mary up on the stand. I have put John up on the stand. I have put Peter up on the stand, and all of them have testified that I am alive. Well, if that is not enough, I know that he's put Chris Levy up on the stand. I know he's put George Lawton up on the stand. I know he's put Martin Stringer up on the stand. I know he's put Veronica Isaac up on the stand. I know he's put Deacon Daniels up on the stand. I know he has put Deaconess Williams up on the stand. I know he's put Cynthia up on the stand. And she put Cynthia up on the stand with a picture of me and said, I know you ain't guilty. So I need somebody else that's in this building that can be a witness for Jesus that we can put him up on the stand and you can declare unto the world not only have I felt him but I have seen him anybody seen him show up in the courtroom anybody seen him show up in the bedroom anybody seen him show up in the living room anybody show him see up in the emergency room anybody seen him show up on your job I just need a few witnesses in here that can be a witness for my Jesus I declare that I will tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Anybody know he's been good? He is worthy. Stand on your feet. And he is worthy to be praised. But the world needs more now than ever. A witnesses for Jesus Christ. I'm so proud of my sister Dawn. I'm so proud of her for being, you know, I was about to say bold and courageous. Dawn and I talk every week, and I know her faith, and I know everything that comes out of her mouth when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ is real and authentic. Now, I almost said bold and courageous because ain't it a shame that we have to defend when we give God the glory? Isn't that sad, y'all? Isn't that? When you have these entertainers and these artists and college coaches and they begin with um, I want to give God the glory and then in a news reporter questions them isn't that sad but that's in the day that we're, we're in and I just I, I, I just give her honor for giving God all the glory and telling her testimony that when they lost to Iowa last year, she was stunned and, dedic and devastated. Last year's team was the team that was anointed to be the national championship. She had her whole team returning. On paper, they were supposed to win the national championship. But it didn't happen. This year was what we supposed to have been called a rebuilding year. The majority of the team are underclassmen. They weren't supposed to be undefeated at this time. They weren't supposed to be on paper about to win the national championship based upon their youth and immaturity in basketball level. And so what they have really done is a miracle, being able to take a brand new team that doesn't have the experience, all right, don't have the cohesion as last year's team had, don't have Aaliyah Boston anymore, because our girl, um, Camilla, she, was, she, she sat at the bench last year. That's a word right now. Him a third sermon. Him my third sermon. Him a third sermon. All right. Give this young lady transfer from Syracuse, Cuse, 
but sat the bench and waited her turn. Oh, but anybody know they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as eagles. And that's what she is right now because she waited her turn. Hear my fourth sermon. Pastor, you always talk about sports so much. Well, it's good, good, good lessons in it. And it's good lessons in it. I mean, besides just teamwork and love and camaraderie, uh, Coach Staley has a way of taking 15 McDonald's All-Americans who can start for any school right now. All of her backups, all of her backups, Coach, you know this, all of her backups could start at any school right now, but they sit the bench and wait for their turn. And Dawn has proven to them that if you trust the process, you're going to make it to the promised land. So I just want to serve notice right now on the devil for some of you who are in doubt, for some of you who are impatient, so some of you who don't understand why your career has not advanced the way it was supposed to advance and the time that you wanted it to advance, that if you just sit on the bench, do your job in practice, great things will happen to you. For this is the word of God for the people of God. So thanks be under God. Come into his sanctuary. Come experience the fullness of his grace. Come love with us together in corporate worship. For those of you who are part of ministries here at the Brooklyn Northeast Church, to those of you who have created a community within the church, you know how special that is to be able to turn to your sisters when you need help, to be able to turn to your brothers when you need help, to be able to turn to your choir members when you need help, when death happens, when sickness happens, when someone is down, when somebody has lost their job. All right, it is good to have people who love you and who will support you. And I'm just afraid that if we don't see you, we don't know you. And if we don't know you, how can we help you? Now, I know you're saying Jesus can do it all. But read your Bible. He mostly does it through other people. So, if you have a hardened heart, release it today. If you're staying away from the church because you think there are too many hypocrites. You know, when you're at the Grammys and you're at the Emmys and you're talking and doing your thanks and they start playing the music, that means it's time for you to shut up.
anybody want to give their life to Christ? Anyone want to start running with Jesus? We're not going to hold you long. We're not going to believe at the moment. If there's anybody want to run with Jesus Christ right now, why don't you come run down these aisles? If there's someone that wants to now disciple with us, want to fellowship with us, want to be a part of this ministry we call Brooklyn Northeast, we're not going to belabor the moment. Just tell your neighbor, move, 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 move. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to come on. I see you want to move. I see you want to. I felt somebody in their spirit, but everybody tell them to get out of the way. I just want to give my life to Christ so I can run with Jesus. Amen. If there's anybody desire right now, we're waiting for you. You're right now, if you're looking for a church home, a place where you can be rooted and grounded in the Word of God and feel like you're loved, you can love Him right here at the Brooklyn Northeast Church. One of the things why I really love Dr. Winnie Johnson, why I really love Dr. Winnie Johnson, Dr. Winnie Johnson is an old school principal. She's a principal, amen. And you know, most principals are kind of cold and stoic. We, a whole lot of us, would have done a better job in school if Winnie was our principal, amen, because she feels like shouting all the time. Amen. She feels like giving God the glory. You don't find many principles like that. You know y'all educated folk can be a little stuck up sometimes. Y'all educated folk, you know, don't like to put your hands together. Some educated folk, you know, you got to have all the science and all the methodology. But anybody feel like shouting? Come on, Winnie. Let's shout a little bit. Somebody feel like shouting right now? Let's shout. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Come to the table before you come to the table just a couple of announcements let's now worship let's now worship through giving let's now worship through giving come on the lord loves a cheerful giver we want to worship now through giving we want to worship now through giving um tim put that up um you could there are several ways to give you can text to give by that number 803 Two two three seven five one nine. What you do is you simply um, put the dollar amount that you want to give, followed by a space, and um, followed by BNE Capital Campaign. You can give through our Brooklyn Baptist Church um, website, which is brooklynbaptist.org. You can give through your Shelby app. Um, you can leave your envelope with an usher after services or you can mail your contribution to the church. If you're doing the website, it's going to ask you, there's going to be a drop down that asks you what fund you want to give to, and then you want to select the BNE Capital Campaign. Um, if you want to text to give, you give the dollar amount um, that you want to give. You do not have to limit it to 100. I left a zero off for spacing reasons, but if you want to give more than you certainly can give more but again you put BNE campaign BNE capital campaign all in one word if you want a text to give a couple of announcements I want to share with you our women's ministry our women's ministry is going to honor the pastor's wife and uh, even though the sign says first lady I don't use that term because my sainted mother would not allow me to use that term to call Cynthia the first lady. Mama said if there's a first, there could always be a second. <laughs> so she hated the term, Roslyn, first lady, or first gentleman. It's the only lady and it's the only gentleman, or just my wife, amen? So it's cool. Everybody's so used to it, so it's cool. But I want to thank you. I want to thank the women's ministry for um, finding not robbery and finding it in their hearts to honor Cynthia, amen? Uh, amen. Yeah. 
she married to me. So let's stand up and give the only lady. You just got to thank her for dealing with me. People ask me all the time, uh, how's, how, how's Cynthia doing? How's your wife doing? I said she was there this morning. That's half the battle, amen? Uh, you might not be real about it, but all of us who have spouses at any time could have been like Forrest Gump and run for our lives, amen? And I want to thank her every day for staying with me. Go back, Tim. I ain't go back. The tickets are only $10. There's only $10. We have made the fee very nominal. Um, we're going to take care of all the rest of it. We didn't want to tax the people. There's so much stuff that you're about to see we're going to do. So we're making all the fees very, very nominal because we want you to help us celebrate. Giving you very, very, very much advanced notice of what else is coming up this year that will have a financial price tag on it. I apologize. There's nothing you can do in the world anymore without having some type of financial price tag. Um, I turned 50 on July 16th of this year. I turned 50 on July 16th. Um, as you know, I don't do parties. I ain't coming to your birthday party, and I'm not having no birthday party. A few of our friends are going out of town, but it won't be um, a birthday party. You won't find me like other preachers with no crown, <laughs> no throne. Uh, every ministry won't be bringing a gift up to the altar. What I want to do, if you will do it with me, I just want to have brunch with you after church. On July 21st, 2024, the price for a ticket to the brunch is $25, and we're going to do it um, just almost like a wedding reception. I've got Kiki's Chicken and Waffles coming. I've got DG, I mean, Deidre's Catering coming. I've got Tamitha Gaskin Company, so you'll be able to pick and choose what you want, you'll be able to eat. As soon as you get there, I hate going to a wedding and they make us wait an hour. Because <laughs> y'all need to know, the couple need to know, we ain't come here for the wedding, we came here for the reception. <laughs> so as soon as y'all get there, it's going to be um, at a venue at Sand Hill. As soon as you get there, you can begin eating. There won't be no program, it won't be no remarks, it won't be no hat box to collect gifts. If you want my cash app, just ask me privately, I'll be more than happy. <laughs> Um, to give it to you, but I just want to celebrate with my people. Amen? Amen. I just want to celebrate with my people again. But unfortunately, every everything you got to do to celebrate got a price tag, and I'm sorry we can't do the. If it's a child, if it's you know two and under, I'm just sorry. It's twenty five dollars a ticket. Eat what your child would have eaten. Amen. <laughs> now. On September the 8th, September the 8th, September the 8th, September the 8th, we're going to have our annual ch church picnic, something I want to start as a tradition of this church. we got so much land, all right? We've got so much picnic area. The church is going to provide all the proteins. The church is going to provide the hot dogs, the hamburgers, the fried fish, and the chicken. You bring your own size. You can eat out your trunk. You can bring a tent, whatever you want. We'll have games and all the bouncy houses, all, but the $10 is just for the protein, so you can buy a ticket um, for that. And then we're going to have an old school church T-shirt. Hey, Amen. We're going to have, we're going old school, man. We're going to have, we ain't had a church T-shirt in years. And it's $15 if you want, and we'll take pre-orders for the um, church um, picnic. Tell your neighbor if you know the math, that's $50. Tell your neighbor if you know the math, that's $50. So whole, whole $50 throughout the year. Um, put it in your little piggy bank. And so you can join us with all of our wonderful um, things that we're about to do to celebrate our church. Amen. We also, again, want to thank you for what you've given on behalf of the uh, mission and the ministry of the Brookland Church as we develop our, our community learning center. Our community learning center um, is, again, again, for our children. You know what it's going to encompass, our children's church, our, our um, youth department. Uh, we'll have all of our um, after-school programs, also our food pantry. We also will have our tutorial programs, our economic innovator, our meeting space, and also, again, where we provide food for those who need it. I'm so excited about all of those of you who already have given 
unto your pledges. I know a lot of you have not pledged, but you are given. For those of you who have already given at least $1,000, you're already part of our Andrews um, Allies program, and we thank all of you who have given already on behalf of the mission and ministry. If you're home, there is a QR code that you can hold up to your TV, you can hold up to your desktop, it will send you to the pledge page, it will send you to the giving page, so we made it very, very, very easy for you. Amen? Amen and amen. I think our women's ministry is, are they selling tickets um, outside today? So if you would like to celebrate with us um, all of Cynthia's hard work, dedication, and dealing with me. Um, again, dealing with me is the major, I think that's the major reason why they're doing this. <laughs> For real, because they ain't say nothing to me about it, because they know what they, some people just have discernment, Amen. So I just want to thank God for them doing that um, for Cynthia. Amen. It is now time to prepare our hearts to celebrate God's table, celebrate his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Does everyone have the elements? Does anyone not have the elements? Does anyone need a cup? Um, if you need a cup, please raise your hand and we will bring one to you. Deacons. Amen. One of our newest deacons, Deacon Paul Romy, will now bless the table. <clears throat> Let us look towards heaven. God, our Father, it's again that we come in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Lord, for this day. We thank you, dear Lord, for health, life, and strength. We thank you, dear Lord, for the preached word from Chris Levy Johnson. We thank you, dear Lord, that the word will not turn into be void, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord, for giving us such a beautiful day on today, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord, for this weighted congregation, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord, for Brooklyn Baptist Church, Northeast, this belt of spot, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord, for the word, for it will not return unto you, thy people avoid, Heavenly Father. Now, Lord, we pray that you will bless this table, Lord. We pray that you will forgive us for our sins. Lord, we pray for the sins of omission, the sins of commission, and sometimes it's the sins of no mission, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, that this, um, that we pray, Lord, that you will bless this table, Lord, and what it represents, Lord, that it represents the blood that was shed on the Calvary cross. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen. amen. All right, my fifth sermon. <laughs> the sin of no mission. <laughs> the sin of when you ain't done nothing. So the Bible's, I'm just trying. Ooh, I'm going to pull. Ooh. Ooh. I ain't even going to give you credit when I preach it. I <laughs> Ooh. Is there a sin in not doing nothing? All right, you're going to mess me up, Paul. You can't pray no more at the end. All right. You got on your stay set? No, I ain't got on your stay set. <laughs> on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for you. Eat thereof. The pastor lets you know when you can eat. You hungry? <laughs> I know your mama made you breakfast. Shh. Just between, I got the mic. Likewise, he took the cup. And he said, this cup of wine represents... My blood which will be shed for the remission of your sins. Drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. We thus did there do for showing both the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to do something different. I want to do something different, but I still want to be in order. I want to still be in order. Um, your pastor really, really, really talked too much today. All right, so I apologize. Now I don't. But um, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer to do what you want to do, but I don't want to hold you too much longer. Stephanie, I'm just going to forego the singing of our hymn. 
Ushers, if you'd be at the doors. Ushers, if you'd be at the doors. Don't go through David. David, you're, not, you're doing right, but just don't do it right now. David like to speak to everybody when he come through in the house. So that could be another 30 minutes. But just, just ushers be, or deacons be at the end, at the um, doors. You can just give your um, cups um, as you leave. Again, I don't have nowhere to go. I'm not rushing you. But I really, really, really don't want to hold you too long, especially uh, when I have probably just ad-libbed and talked too long. It ain't your fault. Amen. So one of the um, four best words in the Bible is when <laughs> Moses said, let my people go. Amen. <laughs> so now unto him who can keep you from falling, and now unto him who presents you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. May the only wise God, our Father, be you glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now don't put your tithe and your envelope in the trash can, okay? <laughs> Make sure. Put yeah. Put, oh, they got bags? Yeah. Oh, y'all bougie. <laughs> all right, put it in the bag, put it in the trash can. Have a great week. We love you much. God bless you all.